You're watching Speak Up for Blue TV, where I bring you the latest, greatest, and not so greatest ocean news happening around the world. Our first story today, I bring you to sunny Miami, Florida, where recently pictures surfaced on the internet of Rosie O'Donnell, a guy by the name of Mark the Shark, and a 15-foot hammerhead shark hung up on a charter, dead. And the reason why I bring up this story is not just for the celebrity aspect of it, is because as of January 1st, 2012, hammer, the fishing in ham, of hammerhead sharks in Florida state waters is considered illegal. They are protected. So of course, with these pictures surfacing last week, people were enraged. Conservationists, ocean enthusiasts went to Twitter and berated Rosie O'Donnell and kill her, get her, charge her, this and that. And of course, she responded. Now, of course, I have to tell you that her, one of her responses was that the picture was taken in December of last year. So technically, it was not illegal for her to catch the hammerhead shark, which is fine. But I had one problem with another one of her comments. One of her comments was, my family liked to fish. We catch what we catch. Hammerhead sharks weren't illegal to catch until January 1st. I have a huge problem with that. And of course, I'm paraphrasing, but I have a huge problem with that statement. The fact remains that hammerhead sharks have been, populations have not been doing well for the last few years, and it only happened now where they were actually protected. So technically, if you're a fisherman, you should know what animals are doing well and what they're, what's not doing well. You should take that responsibility and look up on the internet to find out what animals in state waters are doing well and not doing well. And of course, Mark the Shark, who owns a charter service and is responsible for killing hundreds of thousands of sharks and big game, and he actually brags about it. On his website, he has pictures of people, getting, of people who got bit by sharks to perpetuate that negative persona that we have of sharks so that he can make more business, have more business, make more money on killing sharks. So getting back to Rosie, Rosie, if you're going to be a fisherman, your family are going to be a fisherman, you should teach your family to look up and be responsible fishermen and look up to find out who, which species are not doing well, which species is to ca you can catch. For instance, if you caught a hammerhead shark by accident, you could have let the hammerhead shark go instead of killing it. It's pretty simple. So take re fishermen, take responsibility for yourselves, for your actions, and let's make a better ocean and still be able to fish. Our next story I bring you all the way to the southwest hemisphere in international waters near Antarctica, where of course the Japanese whaling fleet is going crazy. One reason is they're trying to hunt whales. The other reason is because the Sea Shepherd Society, along with other nature and, and, and animal rights groups, are chasing them away to try and stop as many hunts as possible, as many kills as possible. Now, three Australian men tried to thwart a Japanese security ship from chasing off Paul Watson, who is founder of the Sea Shepherd, sea Shepherd Society, from chasing off whale boats. So these three men at 4.30 in the morning boarded a Japanese ship and were of course immediately detained by the Japanese. And the Japanese threatened to bring them back to Tokyo to bring them up on charges for illegally boarding a ship in international waters. Now I think this story is absolutely ridiculous. The reason why I think it's ridiculous is because not only did the men not stop the Japanese security ship of what they were doing, but they, they caused an international scene that made them look bad, made this whale hunt look bad, and of course pressured the government enough where the Australian government had to go send one of their customs boats to go pick up these douchebags and bring them back home. And of course the government was pissed because they did not agree with what they did but they had to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to go pick up the, the guys and bring them back. And the reason why I'm against this, this kind of attack, I'm not normally against what they're doing in the whale hunt and stopping the whale hunt. I don't believe in violence to, to do conservation but I understand the frustration of a lot of people. However, when you board a ship, you are causing an international scene, especially it's in international waters. And the fact is, a friend of theirs from the same society of these, of these three men said that they were very cooperative on the ship. They ate their food. They, they, they got some exercise. They even, they even befriended some of the crew by teaching them English and the crew teaching them Japanese. They didn't do anything to educate the Japanese men on what they were doing and why it was bad. Educate what ha what's happening to whales. They didn't do anything like that. All they did was boarded the ship to cause an international scene, which, to be honest, I think made the whale hunt look even worse. 
but that's just my opinion. What's your opinion? Put it in the comments below. I really want to know. And I'm not against, like I said, I'm not against the whale hunt. I'm not for it in terms of the use of violence, but I'm not against it because I do understand a lot of people's a lot of people's feeling towards whale hunts and, and that the fact is that nobody is really out there stopping them, but, but Steve Irwin and the Sea Shepherd Society and other animal rights groups. So please put a comment down below. I really want to hear, hear what you think. And of course, our last story of the day is a little more positive. Two fishermen in Hawaii, off the co five miles off the coast of Maui, just caught a 300-pound marlin. And after they caught it, they got a visit from the friend. And here's the video to see who came to t pay a visit and how they reacted. Less than 24 hours after a video of a shark encounter by two fishermen from Oahu was posted to YouTube, it has generated more than 36,000 hits on the web. Now, for the two fishermen, it's a shark tale of a lifetime. Here he comes again. Look at him. Oh, he can come to the motor. Look. Holy <laughs> It's not every day when someone gets to meet and greet a shark so big. That's animal right there. And up close. Talk about jaws. This is the real deal right here, dog. As it got closer, oh, just the size and um, the, the features of it, it was, we knew it was, it was a oh, great white. A day after seeing the shark while fishing five miles off Yokohama Bay on the west side of Oahu, Addison and his friends are still talking about it. As soon as we pulled the marlin in the boat, there was that big fin right there, like five feet from the back of the motors. He was, he was hungry and, and we, we kind of took his lunch. But, <laughs> but the shark did get a bite of something else. He like bite the prop. He bite the prop. Yeah. Wow. I think he was testing it out. Seeing if it was edible. Monster. He's a monster. Wow. Hey, he's hungry, Dom. I hope the West Side guys be aware because, bro, we're close to shore, bro. I mean, I see all types of sharks, but when you see one like that, a great white, oh, wow. I was blown away. This is an unreal trip that we're not going to ever forget. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you. That was well said by Toki. And Toki says that they spent about an hour watching the shark before heading back to shore. They also sold the 300 pound marlin nice. at an auction. And he said that they were blessed to catch the fish and to see that shark. Now I think these fishermen are amazing. Normally, when we hear of fishermen, you hear negative. They want to kill everything, they do something bad, they, they beat the fish, they fin, they do everything bad. But in this scenario, these fishermen actually respected the great white shark. They didn't try and shoot it. They didn't try and poke it. They didn't try and catch it and take their fins off. They let the shark do what it wants. They even let the shark take a bite out of its propeller. And they enjoyed it. They really had a good time. They went home and they actually told all their friends and they're still talking to about this, still talking about it to this day. So I, th I want to bring this story up because we don't see fishermen in this light. There are fishermen out there that actually use the ocean efficiently and they use it wisely and they respect the ocean creatures that are in it and they respect the ocean itself. And I think we need to focus on that on a lot of those fishermen that really do good things for the ocean and only use it for sustenance. So those are the stories for the day. That's the program. Let me know what you think. If you like what I'm doing, I plan on doing more of these things to engage you, to, to discuss, to comment, and please like it if you like the, vi if you like the video. Let me know how you feel in the comments below. There's some links if you want to hear, if you want a profile specific story, there's a link in the description to contact me and let me know which story you want to profile because I will talk about it if you let me know what you want me to talk about. And until then, I'm signing off. Happy conservation. I'm Angelo and founder of SpeakUpForBlue.com.